The Chicago Bears host a workout with safety Kevin Byard to see if he can fit and be with the Chicago Bears. How do we feel about that? We will break it down. But it is Saturday. Of course, it is mailbag day. The episode is mostly sent around you guys that called in. So y'all know after the Bayard conversation, we going to get into the mailbag. We're going to talk about it, break it down right after this. Into Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears. It's me, Bobby, and today I'm with C Dub. What up, my guy? What's the word, nephew? Let's do it. What up? If y'all tuning in with us today, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell as well. C-Dub, the Chicago Bears brought in uh, pretty much free agent safety, Kevin Byard, who was released by the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, last year, my man's played with the Tennessee Titans before being traded with the Eagles, finished off the season with the Eagles, and they just released them not too long ago so they could save some money on their books. C-Dub, so far, Kevin Byard, has not missed a game in his career since he became a starter. Uh, he played 130. He's played 130 games, 120, 100 and total, 130 total yeah. games as safety. This is a guy that can line up as the free safety. He's been placed in a slot before and has played inside the box as mm. a safety before. So he has some versatility. With this guy, what do you think about? How you think about it all? Hey, man, uh, Kevin Byard uh, from the Philadelphia Eagles, most of his career with the Tennessee Titans. He had a couple good years a long, long time ago. Uh, <laughs> in 2017, he had eight interceptions with the Sheesh. Tennessee Titans. Uh, he also had followed those up with two great years in 18 and 19 with four interceptions and five interceptions. Then he got back in 2021 with five interceptions and 2022 and four interceptions. Notice that I'm only thinking about interceptions right now, but he, we need us a ball hawk out there. But uh, he was traded from Tennessee Titans to the Philadelphia Eagles last year where he was after 10 games with the Eagles. He was cut for salary relief. So it's two things that two negatives that's going to tell me no about this guy. Number one, he's a little long in the tooth. Um, I like what he did. He got 28 interceptions in his career. You cannot sneeze at that. But uh, what have you done for me lately? Zero in 2023. Um, and he's a little long in the tooth. I, just, I, I think we need somebody younger to grow up with our young um ascending secondary uh all those guys are gonna be listening to chief keith he listening to r kelly all r kelly r b songs so weak <laughs> so we need so so i'm gonna say no nephew they come in he just coming to do an interview or they coming to, to talk so i hope that conversation is short i mean me personally i think that is something that you might have to entertain this is a guy that come in to provide you some durability this is a guy who is able to provide you with some versatility with playing a free free safety and playing in a slot, playing in a box, and C dub. Can I interest you in this before I continue? Go. Spot rack had his has his market value at 7.2 million. That's comparable to a guy that was released by the Buffalo Bills and Jordan Poyer, and then another guy, the honey badger, Tyron Matthew. If the bear sign him for around, let's just say an annual average of seven mil. Would that change your thought or you still no. feel like you need to go the younger route? No, that even makes it worse for me. I ain't prepared to pay seven million for this old guy. I'm straight. Understood. But to continue on, I think it might not be such a bad idea. I think the okay. Chicago Bears, their draft capital should go to more of their blue, you know, those blue chip type of players. And I'm not okay. saying that you, yeah, I think that for this upcoming draft, you got to hit the offense hard. And I think that if you can get some solid veterans in in certain spots in certain spaces, you should be all right. I believe the Chicago Bears defensive backfield is pretty solid. You just need a guy that's not going to come up in here. Yes, you want that young guy to come up in here. And I'm with that, too. I'm not against it. I'm with that, too. It's just speaking to if you do have a veteran option to where you can save a little bit of that draft capital and not have to use it. So 
that's why I'm looking at that because I do believe that this guy with his durability, with his experience, could just be a guy that you could just plug and play versus less having to develop another young defensive back when you got two that you just developed, three that you've been developing, and one that you just signed long term. That's my you, I'm just at the point like we can do better than that. I, feel I like know that. we could do better. You know how your grandma used to talk to, uh, you know, how my mama and your grandma used to, you could do better than that, boy. Come on, we can <laughs> do better than the damn Kevin Bayard, bro. Come on. That's all I'm saying. I like how he play. That's just me. I like how okay. he play. He provides a little bit of range. I'm not looking for another. I'm not Nephew, looking why he get for a guy. Cut? Nephew, I mean, why he get cut? For salary cap reasons. Come on, nephew. If if you're good and they need you on a team, the Eagles go to the playoffs every year. If he's a good player, they find a way to keep the guy on the field, nephew. Right. But then at the same time, for this Eagles situation, they got money tied up in a lot of other places to be trying to pay him some money to where they probably can feel like they can use that money in other places. That's okay. what I'm saying. Because I believe his annual average was $12 million a year. If you oh. do sign him as the bear, the projected market value will be seven. I don't know what he's going to get. We don't know. But the projected market value right now says seven million annually. So I think it's not too bad because I think the, sh the focus for the Bears should be offense. I'm just saying this sounds like a roll of the dice to me. Kevin Bayard sounds like a roll of the dice and we don't even have to gamble. We don't have to gamble. We can go and get us an established, really good young player. That's what I think. For sure. And then lastly, they did just add uh, to various more. Yeah. I believe it's his last name from San Francisco. So maybe uh, 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 in the room, but yeah. hey, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. I think it's a very interesting topic, though, for sure. Yeah. To see if yeah. the Bears want to get a veteran at that safety spot to see and, and to see who else they might bring in. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. because I think if they do bring somebody in uh, that's a vet, especially with an age like this, He's only here for a year, two tops, and then you move on. But I think, he yeah. He 30, nephew. That's 30 what I'm saying. He's old. here for a year or two tops. I don't think it's a long-term investment if they go that route. Okay. I, I think okay. they push that discussion on for next year to get a younger safety. That's all I'm saying. Okay. You're gonna for see. sure. For sure. But, hey, it's time to get into the mailbag. But before we do so, we got to let you guys hear something from our sponsor, Aura. You know, anyone can find anything on the internet, including your full legal name and personal email, your home address, phone number, and even your relatives. For me, personally, I never took this kind of stuff seriously, that people can take my personal data and use it for their own financial gain. Well, in 2019, I got my identity stolen, including my social security number and credit card information, and it was a total nightmare getting it all sorted out. From recouping loans that were taken out in my name and shopping sprees on my credit card, there are some really bad people out there, and it's sad to say, but it's true. Do a Google search for your personal information or someone you know and see if a people search site shows up. The information is easily accessible because of data brokers who profit by selling your information to robocallers, telemarketers, spanners, and anyone else that wants to learn more about you. And so for me, protecting my and my family's personal data and information is at the utmost importance because of the terrible experience I had four years ago. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. Aura will identify data brokers that are exposing your information and automatically submit opt-out requests on your behalf. They will even opt out of junk mail and telemarketing lists. Aura also monitors your emails and passwords to see if they were involved in any data breach and exposed on the dark web. Aura's app also features VPN, password manager, real-time credit card and identity theft monitoring, internet parental controls, and protects your device from malware. Aura has almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need all inside one app, which is what makes it so amazing, so that you don't have to use multiple platforms and sites to protect yourself. Let Aura do the hard work, keeping you safe online, and if you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two-week free trial with my link below. You'll be shocked at how much your private information Aura finds exposed over two weeks. I was shocked at how much my information Aura was able to find when I was using the app. Go to Aura.com slash CBC to start your free trial. Also linked in the description, or you can scan the QR code here. Now back to the video. 
All right. Make sure y'all sign up on that and get you a free trial. See you. what yeah. kind of information of yours is out there to where you can go ahead and protect yourself with all this cyber stuff going on. But oh, hey, no. C-Dub, it's time to get into this mailbag. Ladies and gentlemen, the first mailbag is from Dom. Dom. Hey, C-Dub, Bobby. This is Dom from Texas. The only brother that's walking around with the big C on his chest. Hey, man, I want to say it. Like I said once before, I'm going to say it again. The Bears is not trading Justin Fields. And can y'all do me a favor? Tell Cap to eat a fuck. Talking about chasing greatness. Like you've been chasing that fucking headline in here? Yeah, right, motherfucker. Um, and another thing, man. The Brand Poles is not going to spend all this money on these young players. They go try to draft a, a fucking rookie quarterback. If, he do, if somehow this rookie quarterback don't make it, all your fucking money is going down the drain trying to – Help this guy get his shit together for, for two, three years down the line. We was only a couple of players from fucking making the playoffs last last year. So why the fuck would you take a couple of steps back just to just to grab some some shiny ass quarterback that's in that's in the uh, that's in college right now? That shit doesn't make no sense to me, man. But that's all I'm gonna say right now. Like I said, and I'm still holding that. If I'm wrong about what I'm saying. $300 to the chat. Y'all keep holding me to that. Peace. Mm -hmm. Chicago up, bear down. Yeah. If he's wrong, 300 to the chat, but hey, appreciate that. <laughs> 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 it don't matter though, but hey, C-Dub, take it away. Hey, shout out to my, my man Dom holding it down for Bears Nation out there in Texas. I know it's wild with all them Dallas Cowboy fans. He is a soldier. Now, look, for sure, <laughs> I definitely believe in your narrative. Uh, we're getting very close next week. Monday starts the free agency period. We will get this answer answered really quickly. It's right around the corner, I think. And I believe in your logic that always been my logic. Why take a step back? This is a rookie quarterback. There's going to be some struggles. CJ Stroud is an outlier. Everybody stop trying to be thirsty and let's continue the um our trajectory to go into the playoffs and stand with Justin Fields. That's always been my logic, but we're going to see really soon. We will see. And I agree with everything that you said, but I do got to play devil's advocate. The reason I'm going to play devil's advocate is because we don't know the decision. So we got to look at it all from both sides. So I do agree with everything you and Dom said, C dub, but on the mm -hmm. other side, what if just what if the Chicago bears are looking at it like, Hey, Maybe we take one step back to take three steps forward and you might get something that pops off the screen. You might get a little bit more sustained success and the future is bright. What do you say about that? I said that's that's an actual play to make, but it is more of a gamble because yes. this guy has not played a down of NFL football. I know he's very, very good, bro. He's very, very good. But it is a lot, it's been a lot of very, very good college quarterbacks that came into the NFL and wasn't good. I'm not saying it's going to be him, but you you right. But, I, but that's, a gamble. that's a gamble. I'm with you on that. I agree with you. And thanks for calling in, Dom. It is what it is. Thank you for supporting the channel, man. C-Dub, now we move on to our guy. We ain't heard from him from a, in a couple of weeks. But this one from Buck. We going to Buck the world. Buck! Yo, 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 Bobby, C-Dub, what's up? This book, man, I know it's been a while, man. I had to take a break, man. Like I said, like I told Hayes, I had to get away from it all, man, because it was, it's, it's getting real annoying, man. Well, it's past annoying, man. It's just stupid now. Yeah. But um, I just want to say, man, I, I got to give uh, a shout-out, man, to Poles, man. You know, the man has been a man of his word from day one. He has done everything he said he was going to do. And uh, for the first time in my life, and and I've been a fan for decades, man. Like, we finally got somebody that's in there, man, that's actually making good football decisions and is thinking about the future of the team, not just a one and done. You know what I'm saying? He's looking for perennial success and eventually uh, Super Bowl and uh, playoffs and all that, man. So, I want to give props to to, uh, to Ryan Poles, man. The, the, the man is, is is doing a good job, man. And, and you know, I know some some people for some reason like have it out against him. You know, well, you know, I, I think we know some of the reasons, but that's another story for another time. But 
let the man do what he do. Let the man, you know, put his plan into fruition and watch how the Bears prosper. That's all I wanted to say, man. Hey, Chicago up, Bear Down. Y'all have a good weekend. Shout out to Book. And I'm with you, Book. Book. And, I don't, and I ain't mad at you for taking your break because uh, like man, like we all been saying, man, it's been crazy on this side of Bears Nation. It's been crazy on the other side of Bears Nation. And all we need Ryan Post to do is come and come out Say what he has to say, make the decision, and calm the sea. And then you still gonna have your few idiots and bozos that come in and still try to pick nitpick and try to create their own narratives. But I believe the masses will come together and move on for the better of the Chicago Bears. Hopefully, as long as you following right here, Chicago Bears Central, we gonna keep it going and supporting the squad. That's all you need to tune into. And shout out to you, book. Thanks for calling in, bro. Hey, uh, shout out to my man, Book, man, one of our uh, uh, beginning supporters from the start. I understand you taking a break, man. This is crazy. Uh, if I wasn't doing this, this show with these great guys that I do this show with, I would be taking a break. Not to, to tell you the truth. If I was just a Bears fan, I would be taking a break. But I love it. We love interacting with you guys. When it comes to polls, absolutely, man. I got three things I want to say about polls. He's been poised. He's been thorough and he's been steadfast and making uh, making great decisions for this franchise. And I got to applaud and, and commend him for that. And uh, and he's taking his time. And you've seen there be no leaks. All these other leaks you're hearing from right now, that's just from people trying to uh, be clouch. They trying to be uh, uh, clout lords, trying to get get the story out. But I, you got to appreciate Ryan Pose and what he's doing for this franchise, for sure. Absolutely, you do appreciate what Ryan Pose is doing and to add on the reason why I believe he's a solid GM and pretty damn good at his job is because when he makes the bad moves he moves off of it quickly Quick. look at Chase Claypool you got oh. him out of here and I think good able to take you you trying to build out something and it didn't hurt you in the end because you was able to still get some players in return you know in in other places so you you good to go yeah well, Claypool, he he won line, but that you know what I'm saying how he got kicked out, nephew. He won line what he said because obviously they got rid of Lukey Dukey. But hey, that wasn't the right thing to do with this franchise. We building about uh, a uh, a great culture in Chicago, and Claypool stepped out of bounds. So for sure. Well, thanks for calling in, book C Dub. Now we gonna move on to a voicemail from Maine. What you talking about, Maine? Mine. Yo, what's good? This is uh, mine from the south side. I just wanted to uh, really say to kind of uh, squash a lot of feelings that may arise for all of us who want to keep Justin as QB. And I know y'all want to talk about it, but I'm going to keep it brief. Anyhow, uh, y'all should love the narrative that the Bears are taking Caleb number one. Shouldn't argue at all. I'm Ryan Foles and I plan on keeping Justin. I was scared about myself. Like, we, why? Because of the hall, man. <laughs> it's because of the hall. And so, you know, the more everybody thinks we getting Caleb, you know, the more his value go up. The more they uh, lord over him and think he's the best, which I wish him the best, but I would rather keep Justin. But the more they, they praise him, the, the higher the, the hall we getting. So, I mean, I just look at it that way. That's why I don't even let none of that stuff bother me, man. But I appreciate what y'all are doing, man. Keep it up. Chicago up better. Shout out to Maine. And I think Maine. that was a great point. See, Doug, yeah. take it away. Hey, Maine from the South Side. That is a great way to go about it, bro. All these media personalities, all these uh, old players, it's mostly old players, some young players as well. Uh, they all saying you got you can't miss with Clay. Go get him with Clay. Take that as 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 my man Man said. That could be building up the interest and get us a bigger haul if we was to trade away that number one pick. So that is a great way to be a rational Bears fan. And the people that's on the other foot, 
uh, be happy that you're hearing all these people if, if you want to do that. If you hear all the media personalities say, go get Caleb, I see, see how that can get you excited. But you can also, you should also see the other way, like that can be building up the interest for that number one pick if it ain't enough interest already. Facts. And I'm, I might agree with both of you guys. You definitely want to get that Caleb narrative jumping off your screen, getting it in your earbuds, getting it from your phone, scrolling on your social media as much as possible. So some thirsty ass GM from an opposing team, if Ryan Poe's decision is to keep Justin Fields, that GM is like, hold on. I can't let him take Caleb Williams. I got to give him the historic haul. And we be all on board. And Ryan, we be like, damn, Ryan Poe's cooked up again. Because last year, the Bears were interested in C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young. At least that's how the offseason started. <laughs> yep. Until we woke up one day and uh, the first round pick was traded. D.J. Moore was coming in and draft capitals galore. So yeah. we shall see what happens. But I'm with you, C-Dub, on your last point as well. Hey, if it's for the people that's in favor of getting Kayla Williams, they should be happy too. <laughs> yeah, they should be happy, bro. Um, this a big decision, man. It's coming up around the corner. Um. I love the rational, the rational narrative and uh, the logic that my man Main got from the South Side. Uh, I think a lot of people should take this, take this strategy, bro. Just be sit back and be cool, bro. Let Ryan Pose cook, bro. Let him cook, bro. Because the shirt and the glasses mess. will be back out. <laughs> oh, <bro. laughs> this Ryan Let Pose cook. shirt and the glasses will be back out. <laughs> Joe, y'all steady coming to the barbecue grill trying to get a little bite, bro. Let him cook, bro. What's wrong with y'all? Yeah, the chicken ain't done yet. It ain't even done yet. Y'all want a little damn taste hot dogs or the glizzies ain't even got a little burnt mark on them yet. <laughs> it's all about glizzies. We still eat glizzy. Wait, hey. I can't even say that right now. We eat mm. hot dogs around this month. <laughs> right. <laughs> for sure. But thanks for calling in, man. Now, this next one, C dub, is from Tyrese. Tyrese. Strong Yak boys. What it do, man? It's your boy Tyrese. All of them, Arkansas by way of South Side Chicago. Anyway, check this out. I'm watching our episode right now with C Dub talking about the finesse game, but I'm going I'm to up one real quick. <laughs> I know y'all going to think I'm crazy, but you know, I'm just an optimistic Bears fan that loves this thing. But I bet you any kind of money, I'm giving up that fifth round pick for Ryan, the Buffalo um, um, offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. Whether he played swing or play Cody Whitehair position or hell, let's just say even start at center. Guarantee you that's going to be the best move, one of the best moves that we make, mm. that we made this offseason. I'm telling you, I really believe this guy going to come in and, and and probably just steal our hearts and, and win the starting center job and, that center that we've been looking for, like some old and cruise types. I ain't gonna go that far, but anyway, <laughs> I believe we just got a, a gym, man. And you, you know how y'all, you know how these fifth rounders sometimes turn out to be. Sometimes we hit, sometimes we miss, but at least we know what we're getting with this one. So I wish that you know, I, I've been seeing a lot of people talking about giving up picks, this, that, and the third. For me, I don't give a damn if we do leave with five draft picks. Let's just make all five of them count because um, we get a starting receiver, a starting offensive lineman, a starting free safety, a starting defensive end in the first three picks. You know, and fill three major holes, you know, and then let's just say, for instance, if we go spend a few dollars up in free agency and, you know, and, and one and done, one one year deal until, until the next year. And feel the rest of the draft, man. Come on. Anyway, I just like calling in. Chicago up, head down, and keep it, keep it rolling, man. Y'all just about to shit like air five minutes, seem like. Yeah. Y'all be smooth. All right. Thanks for calling in, Tyrese. C Dub, what you got to say? All right. Shout out to Tyrese. And I hear you talking on this uh, Ryan Bates thing. Wouldn't it be wonderful? That would that would be a big move. I don't think it can it can surpass like a trade for that number one pick or a trade of Justin Fields. I think that would be the ultimate uh move of the offseason. But Ryan Pates, Brian Bates, if he can come through and be a starting center for the Chicago Bears, 
oh, that 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 move can't be ignored. You right on target, Tyrese. <clears throat> Once again, if Ryan Poles pulls another stunt, another big deal like this, you just gotta continue to applaud this guy and sign that extension right now. That is amazing. If you can get a guy that's what is that for a fifth round, we traded him for a nephew or a fourth. Yes, it was a fifth, fifth round. And get yourself a star that's center that's competent, that can actually hike the ball, that can actually hold the middle of the field for a second at least. Man, that'll be awesome, nephew. I can't lie, bro. For sure. And I think that um, Tyrese has some really good points. Hey, even if you go into the draft with five picks, make all five count. It's not like you can't find players in the later rounds or with the picks that you have. And sometimes if, even if you get more picks, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to hit on all of them. That's just how the draft is. You are pretty much shaking up the dice, trying to see if you can roll that seven, but you keep rolling those snake eyes. You're going to be up out of there. You're going to lose your money. It's yeah. that simple. You're going to crap out for my people that play craps. Don't and that's go. just what it is. You don't get your number. You're going to crap out, but see the real quick. I got a question for you too. After you finish. Real quick, in 2022, in the later rounds, the Chicago Bears had got Braxton Jones, Dominic Robinson, Zachary Thomas, Treston Ab uh, Abner, Doug Kramer, J. Tyree Carter, Trenton Gill, and Elijah Hicks. You ain't got too many starters left on that draft. Yeah, well, you got <laughs> they came two. in those later rounds. In the later yeah. rounds from last year, you got Tyler Scott, Noah Sewell, Terrell Smith, Travis Bell, and Kendon Williams. Uh, you had some better. guys come out here and play some, play some, yeah. But they're still bit. not starters, and you still have questions surrounding some of these other guys. The point is, is that these later round picks, they don't hell any pick. <laughs> they don't always yeah. pan out. Yeah. So you got to sometime you got to take your chance and go out and get a proven guy, even if you got to cough up a little bit of money. And when you go get Ryan Bates, you ain't coughing up much money. Yeah. So I think the move is good overall. What you got to me? Uh, see, when I think about the draft picks, I think the more you got, the more chances you got to find you a gym. For sure. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the way I think about it. So the bull, the Bears sit at like five picks for this upcoming yes. draft. Mm -hmm. When we get to the draft, do you think the Bears sit at five picks? No. <laughs> that's just what I come <laughs> down to. But no. <laughs> if they was, you know, if they was, you know, were cool with just going into Over this or under five before picks. you go. Over or under before you go. I was definitely going over five picks. I just believe okay, that's what it is. And I think that you could trade some of your later round picks to recoup more later round picks and see if you can have a few more bites at the apple so you won't crap out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. A yes. few more rolls yeah. so you won't crap out. <laughs> no, bro. Uh, yeah. But I just hey, think fair that point. five, that ain't enough, nephew. I just think five ain't enough. I agree with you. I agree with you. But, hey, C-Dub, this last one on the docket comes from Dewan. DeWan. Hey, Jenna Cole, y'all boys, what it do? This your boy DeWan from Chicago on the low wind. I've been watching y'all every day still. You know, I just haven't been calling me in. You know, y'all been going in on no motherfuckers and all. But I was just calling, you know, because I'm trying to see, you know, Ryan Poles. Like, I know Matt Eberflus is getting the people that he want on defense. That's Matt Eberflus. But Ryan Poe's been fucking with this goddamn offense since she got up in here, finding all these weak ass linemen and shit, man. Like outside of drafting Darnell Wright, you know, like is is he is he trying to build the offense the way he wanted? Even with bringing in Shane Waldron and shit, like why the fuck Shane Waldron not the person picking the people he needs on his offensive line that's gonna that's gonna help his team and shit? Like he's he's making it. You know, to the point where he leaving a big, a big step on on what he's doing as a GM, and I understand he's trying to make Chicago better as a team, but he ain't paying nobody besides besides who he want to fucking pay or who Matt Eberflus tell him to pay on the defensive side. Like they they almost tweaked that on Jalen Johnson. Glad they got the deal done. You know what I mean? The four years they they front loaded the shit out of it, but at the same time. They got the deal done. So now you then gave away a draft pick to get this Bates guy, which limits you in the uh, in the goddamn draft. I don't know what they go do 
about the number one overall pick. If they go the route that the, the media is pushing, so be it. What the fuck ever. But me, like I always been telling y'all, I'm like, y'all, I'm, man, like, take the hog and build. You know what I mean? I'm tired of the carousel, tired of all these fucking new quarterbacks trying to come in. Like, at the end of the day, the man is trying to make the team better, but is he letting the offensive coordinators have a say in what type of linemen and people he want to bring in, or is he just doing this shit on his own? You know what I mean? So whenever y'all get a chance, if you know, fill up to answering that question, you know, I'm going to you know, hear y'all feedback on it. And shit, shit, outside of that, man, they, they better get this shit right, man, because they go, they go, whoever that quarterback go get it. If they're not performing the way they're supposed to get, the way they're supposed to do. So, shout out to up, bear down. All right. Shout out to you, DeWan, for calling in. C-Dub, I got two quick points. First thing, DeWan talked about paying players. And I think that DeWan, the, my, my thought process on this and how Ryan Pose has been handling, I think it's been pretty damn good. You trade Roquan Smith and you go get his value and you go you use his value and go get two players to replace him. That is just as productive. Then you go get you your, your star edge guy in Montez Sweat. You get your shutdown corner with uh, Jalen Johnson. You get your number one receiver in DJ Moore. You re you re-sign your number one tight end in Cole Komet. So the money has been dispersed in multiple areas, not just one area. Now, when we talk about the draft, uh, this is my second point. When we talk about the draft, Ryan Pose has taken shots to get offensive players. He drafted Roshan Johnson. They drafted Tyler Scott, who was at the senior bowl, I believe. And Luke Getzey was there. So I'm pretty sure Luke Getzey had to have a hand in that. Then you got Darnell Wright. And then you looked at Treston Ebner. That was another senior bowl guy to where the Chicago Bears staff was. Um, they looked at Trenton Gill. Pretty That was pretty much a dud. And then... Yeah. Uh, outside, and then they looked at Vegas Jones, who was another guy at the senior bowl to where the Bears coaching staff had their hand in that. So I, I, I feel you, but we can't fully say that Ryan Pose is not investing in the team financially and through the draft. We cannot say that, at least in my opinion. Oh, bro, that's a good point. And I just want to touch on this point. Uh, I believe I uh, agree with a lot uh, DeWan said. And this aspect needs to be said. Uh, Ryan Pose is not perfect. Uh, I think it's one thing that's really egregious is that offensive line uh, because you can't begin to win unless you could protect the quarterback. And he hasn't got the offensive line um, uh, correct uh, during this, during this uh, season. That's the Chicago Bears president, CEO, whatever it is, GM, I'm sorry. So it, it, we got to point that out. I love the moves that he did. He, it went mostly defense, and the defense has vastly improved. But one of the most important uh, aspects of football is that offensive line, maybe the most Agreed. important. And he has struggled, and 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 it's been bad. So we got to give him that on his report card, a D or an F for that for that offensive line. Even though there are pieces like the Dar <laughs> Darnell Wright and um, what's my big guy in the middle uh, on the guard? What's my big guy? The young Tevin team. Jenkins. Jenkins. Tevin Jenkins. I think they are stalwarts. But uh, he hasn't got that offensive line uh, together, nephew. Yeah. And my pushback, my pushback to that, you you are correct that the offensive line is still not right and where it should be. But yeah. my pushback is is that we have to understand it's very very difficult to build out an offensive line. And I also think that we gotta at least, though he has not gotten it corrected, for sure. That's the real of it. We still we still can't ignore that he has taken those chances. He's drafted offensive linemen. He's invested in offensive linemen. Some of these guys have gotten hurt. Some of these guys just ain't good enough. So we got to give him a little credit on that. But I do understand where y'all coming from on when both of you guys say that it's just not there yet. So I understand both sides of it. But we got to also remember the context on who he's been drafting and who he's invested in. And... The last point to the Ryan base thing is now there's more competition in the offensive line room because he can play right guard. So if Nate Davis, you ain't on your shit, you might not be starting. And then you never know if another left tackle is coming up in here to add more competition to that room. And Braxton Jones, 
we shall see. Yeah, I think he's a smart guy, nephew. I think he knows he has to get that offensive line together. Uh, I think that'll be the second uh, most important thing for this offseason to me. Uh, even though we had another show and I said something different, I don't give a damn. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> uh, I think it's at the quarterback. We gotta we we gotta get this offensive line straight, and I think Agreed. that's imperative, bro. You have to get it together, Facts. especially with this season coming up. I agree with you, one hundred percent on that last part. But hey, that's it from us, ladies and gentlemen. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to another episode of Chicago Bears Central. C Dub, you got any parting words? Oh man, shout out the south side of Chicago, shout out the low end, and shout out Texas. My name Dom down there representing like a soldier in cowboy country on bro. Dom and I guy who's a freaking uh caller, Darius from Dallas. My oh, yeah, y'all Darius, holding yeah. it down. Big shout out to y'all for holding it down for the Chicago Bears. Love y'all, appreciate y'all. But hey, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you leave all your thoughts and your comments below so we could chop it up today. On this beautiful Saturday, uh, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Anything for us, feedback, questions, comments, concerns, hit us up, Chicago Bear Central at gmail.com. If you want to call in and be a part of an episode like this one, leave your take. That number is 773-242-9336. It's another episode of Chicago Bear Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears. We out of here. Chicago up and bear down, baby. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.